Hello everybody, this is Warlord. Let's take a look at our walkabout crowd. Uh, let's look at the difference in what a simplified prop versus an advanced prop is. There's really not much to either, but one is a lot more versatile than the other. Now the simplified prop, of course, is a budget version of the advanced prop that is merged. It's only one prop. Uh, there's no right click or perform action to it. You just drag and drop it in and it'll immediately start working when you hit play. You cannot duplicate it. You cannot multi-duplicate it. it. It will go ahead and duplicate, but it will not retain the moving animations. The characters will just sit there with, stand there with their legs moving. It will not actually move anywhere because the command blocks are not moving. And you'll notice I have the command blocks on right now. We'll take a look at those here, here in a minute. So what we have basically in our two groups is one group that's closed and one group that's open. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at our advanced group because there's really nothing else you can do with the simplified group, uh, simplified prop, other than to drag and drop it into the scene as many times you need it, position it. Uh, it is half price of the advanced prop, and it was created just for on request for those that wanted a budget prop. Now, as to the advanced prop, as you can see here, when you hit the plus sign, it opens up into three walkabout groups of ten each. Each of these groups has 10 low poly people to it. Now in the advanced section, you can change the makeup of these groups. So for right now, let's just go ahead and turn off the visibility on a couple of these groups. And let's concentrate on this one. Okay, now I'm going to press Control D toggle on the dummies if they haven't already been toggled on in your system. And we're going to go down here and take a look at what this is. Now, the big control block here, that is strictly this crowd control dummy that everything is attached to. Uh, you can turn its opacity off by using its opacity channel or just leave it alone. It's there just as a general placeholder and a way to move this thing around. As you can see, all these are attached. These ten low poly characters are attached to a general crowd dummy. Well, what this general crowd dummy is, is each one of these triangle shaped uh, dummies here. That is the crowd dummy that was exported out of Max. Now, each of these can be selected in mass or individually, and they can be detached. And as you see, they don't move but the dummies will. So any type of a low poly prop, character, if you need to substitute one, anything that can work with this type of movement, you can attach to these dummies. Because the only movement that is on each of the character props is the walk movement, which varies for each one. Now, actually, between ten characters, I think there is actually ten different walk movements at different speeds and different styles. So there's really nothing to using this to customize it. You can also create your own groups. You can do anything you want as far as cloning one of these groups. You can add another 10 person group. You can add two more 10 person groups. Have a 50 person group. However, when you make a group, that group that is on screen cannot be duplicated and retain all the animation. What you need to do is attach everything to one object save it then from there on when you load that new prop you can duplicate it and that's just a matter of how things are put together with iClone now I'm going to undo till I restore the attachments and you can see here how you can attach anything to these and you can change the makeup of a specific 10 person group now this goes for the sidewalk crowd as well. If you do not want this person here, you can delete them. You can substitute your own character. You can move them, exchange them for another one. If you do not want these two that close to each other, they don't have to be right on top of their blocks. In order to really work with them, you need to use the select arrow up here to select the individual peep. Then you can move it especially if it's going to come into collision with another group that you've put there. The people continue to move. Uh, it'll just move 
parallel to its block. Or you can unhook it from the block, get rid of it completely, or unhook two of them, three of them, swap them out. This is very versatile. These drivers can be used for a lot of different things, a lot of different low poly objects. I would suggest low poly though because it's still a large number of items for the iClone engine to keep up with once you start duplicating these things. But that's all there is to this. You can make your own number of groups. The only thing you cannot change is the composition of where these driver blocks go. That was created in Studio Max with behaviors. That's why they don't collide. And in the future we'll try to develop crowds that are in smaller areas, crowds that are in larger areas, but they'll all basically be on the same principle of having driver blocks that you can attach anything to if you buy the advanced version. So now let's take a look at what we can control in terms of the built-in animation. First off, the crowd control dummies are the ten triangle blocks. You can't do anything about where they go. That was all predetermined in Studio Max. But we can go into the timeline and change the speed in which these move. So with one of those selected, I need to go to the animation tab. And let's say you wanted to slow it down. Well, you could come back 100, 200 frames break it, and the break's not going to show because of where the menu goes, delete it, slide it out. Now you slow down how the blocks move, how fast the blocks move. Of course you would speed them up conventionally just like you would any prop by shortening it. Now if you have five groups or three groups like we have here you're going to have to do that to each group but five groups is a probably about as much as you're going to have so you only have to do it five times it doesn't take that long now of course the single uh, simplified version it's all done into one timeline and all you have to do is do that once now when you think about it there's lots of things you can do when you change things like this just changing the speed uh, can control some foot sliding if it's close enough to the shot. But honestly, if you're seeing foot sliding, which is going to happen, then you're really too close to these. You shouldn't have to worry about it because they need to be off in the distance. They're not meant to be that close to the camera. I did not really even take into account foot sliding because how could I? With different gates, different speeds, and I have no idea what speed your scene is going to be running at and things. So all I did was pick a general speed. Now, you can change that as well but you will need to use this select tool to select individual peeps and then each peep does have its own perform menu now this has several of these motions on it because all these are attached it's actually just the walk motion for each one of these peeps the top one being the one for this peep so the walk motion is all that it has and you can in the same way speed up and slow down how fast it walks and these are loopable motions as far as walking goes so we do have some degree of control here now let's close this up and let's take a look back at this crowd 10 walkabout dummy because the action that you're seeing here is action I cut out of a lot more frames than what this is showing if you delete this, you will notice it goes into a closed group. That's because I edited out some of the best parts of this. And I was going to export it that way, but then I decided to leave the raw footage in for those of us that can go in there and edit it. That way you can use it, you can cut parts out of it, you can use what parts of it you need. But now it's going to be fast too. So if you right click on it, hit perform and walk about would be the motion. They're going to take off and they're going to walk about. Now there was some stalling here at the first. That was why I cut some of it out. And this all has to do with how I set up the simulation and animated it within uh, Studio Max. 
so you do have control there as well. Now, when I talk about, you know, uh, coming in here and editing, it would be the same thing we just did. Or you could break it, pull it out if you want it to be a different speed, or push it back in if you want it to be really fast.